Welcome back, uh, ladies and gentlemen, to Salon Graphite's channel involved in the exploration and production of graphite for the future of battery tech. Joining us, as always, the Chief Executive Officer, Donald Baxter. Welcome back. Thanks, Kyle. Always good to be here. And always a pleasure to have you here, man. So you guys have just been tearing it up in this kind of new battery tech world. I mean, you recently achieved breakthrough results with your silicon enhanced anode, uh, anode graphite in full cell lithium ion batteries, outperforming the industry standard of the synthetic graphite by more than 10%. For newer investors, obviously, what is silicon enhanced? Break that down for us. Tell us why you're outperforming the industry standard and just give us some full insight here. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Kyle. Uh, I mean, my view has always been the world needs more processed graphite for batteries. So that's why our focus has been, and that's what I've been doing and even before, before Salon Graphite, working on developing these processes in order to make uh, graphite. Um, we've even touched on or sort of anode graphite, anode quality, which is a process involved, a non-Chinese environmentally sustainable process. So we've been working away at that, and I'm lucky to have... Uh, uh, our two um, scientific executives in in um, in UK. They're both PhDs, husband and wife. Actually, also Sri Lankan, which is also uh, coincidental. Um, but we have the internal capacity within Salon Graphite to develop these technologies. So Salon Graphite may seem like a small little junior mining company, but really we're not. We are. Uh, we have the mining assets in Sri Lanka. But in my mind, everybody wants and we're seeing the OEM start to get excited and need to recognize that they have to get out there and they have to come to companies like us. So the more we show them the technology we can make um, in this regard uh, with, with enhanced uh, battery materials, um, the, the, the better. If they see us, that gives them confidence in what we're doing. We don't just look like a typical junior miner. Uh, you know, we have assets in production um, and, and getting close to hoisting more and more meaningful numbers of amounts of graphite. They want to see that, but they also want to see how good our graphite is. So the one thing with vein graphite is we're seeing this naturally the way it is in the ground. It's, you know, as we talked before, it's 95 carbon, at least in the ground. So we don't have that initial processing step, which is huge from an ESG perspective. And that is also a very big factor in what the OEMs are looking at. You know, what's your uh, life cycle analysis? What's your CO2 footprint throughout your, throughout your process? Um, it's all about making a, a green product with green, green input materials. So what we're showing with this vein graphite, it has a higher degree of crystallinity than flake graphite. And flake graphite will be the majority natural. But one thing we're finding is that these OEMs and the battery makers are still clinging to the synthetic graphite a little bit, or a lot actually. Um, they're saying, let's, let's blend in some natural graphite and see how that works with the synthetic. But what we're saying is, look, we're showing this is better. And if you look at a CO2 footprint for synthetic graphite compared to natural graphite and then vein graphite, um, our, our, our metrics are, are better than synthetic. So um, synthetic graphite is made from petroleum coke. It's a byproduct of, of refining oil, which is what we're trying to get off all this stuff. So it's kind of counterintuitive. So we're showing now the, these OEMs that we're talking about, we can give them a strong alternative to synthetic. So our task is to show them the technology, what we can do with it, and then ultimately show them, you know, when we get, you know, 5, 10, 15, 20 mines running in Sri Lanka, they'll all be small scale, but that also feeds into the ESG narrative is that, yeah, we still have small scale, we can come to a central point, we don't have tailings, we don't have the waste rock areas, we don't have the land disturbance, which is all comes part and parcel with mining in general, and and um, and uh, and namely natural flake graphite, large open pit mines. So we're 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 I think we're coming from a pretty unique angle in this. And again, we're the only ones dealing with vein graphite, as far as I know, in the battery space. Um, so the more we do, the more OEM see us. Um, and news releases like the silicon enhanced. And and the interesting thing is that uh, the wording in, in in the press release. Some people have asked me about. What the heck is nano silicon additive? But it sounds, you know, it, it's pretty high tech, and that's what we're doing. We have that capacity um, to to make this. It's our own work. It's our own proprietary work. Uh, uh, we use our own graphene license. We wrap this this nano silicon, um, and that helps that silicon uh, expansion and contraction that we find with the charging and discharging. So we're doing that. So we have that capacity, and that even I'm even the mindset I have is that, that could also be a, a byproduct. We could sell this to others. It'll be another revenue stream potential out of this because it's we're going to need lots of it. And the more that others can use this technology and, and and help these OEMs make these good batteries and great cars, 
Um, you know, I think we're positioning ourselves to be um, be a pretty key player here. Yeah, before we talk about when you you're mentioning the uh, the Sri Lanka project that you guys are working on, before you kind of give us some guidance into the spring here from like a macro economic circumstance with the geopolitical events. I mean, we shot we saw the short squeeze of nickel. A lot of these kind of battery metals, I don't think people were realizing played a lot into the Russian exports. Are you finding that from your base operation here, just from your own perspective? And obviously this might be a little bit speculative, um, but do you think that they, this is kind of forcing a lot of this, you know, this demand, especially with all these upcoming OEMs into the battery space that are, they're basically going to be forced to go to people like yourself. I mean, it kind of narrowed down the, uh, the, the, the places for them to even look in the first, just in general, right? Well, well uh, yeah, from that standpoint, we're finding from an OEM perspective, they're very nervous about the China situation. And uh, are, they, are they supporting Russia? Are they not? Yeah. You know, we trust them. Uh, we're very we're very concerned about the Chinese process. We're concerned about the geopolitical aspect of it. We, we want to have everything non-Chinese, non-Chinese source of graphite, non-Chinese processing capability, again, from an ESG perspective. So, yeah, it, it absolutely has played into that. I've mean, noticed that one conversation I had, you know, the, the you know, Ukraine came up in conversation and that's, they, they're very concerned about that. So um, Ukraine actually does have some, uh, some natural flake graphite deposits. There's actually an operating mine, uh, Zabolesky, uh, in, in, in Ukraine. And I've been there, I was in Ukraine in, in uh, fall of 2019, looking at some purification technologies. So um, there's definitely some, I don't, Fortunately, three people there that are you know, hunkered down, working, you know, either working with some civil organizations or they've got a AK-47 in their hand or they're in a bunker. So it's a pretty scary situation. So we have some really, you know, sort of close graphite ties and technology ties to to Kiev, um, and then also just uh, south of Kiev is, is a couple of um, uh, graphite deposits. So, um, but anyhow, yes, yeah, so, but it has affected uh, further. I mean, as such as has COVID, you know, brought up supply chain issues. You know, the other geopolitical unrest is just looking, you know, it helps to um, uh, accentuate the need to secure a supply. Yeah, that's, uh, that's incredible insight. I appreciate that. Now, just moving forward from the Sri Lanka project, just give us some brief insights on how you guys see yourselves moving into the spring and what investors should be paying attention to. Well, uh, we're working away on, uh, on, on K1 and we're just, you know, digging deeper, getting the shaft down. Um, and that'll help us on our you know, hoisting meaningful amounts of graphite. Um, I have to be careful of words I use, even from a, from a 43101 perspective, uh, production is a word that necessarily is, is a little bit iffy on using, but um, uh, hoisting lots of graphite is, is, is the key thing. Uh, and and uh, from, from two mines, uh, you know, towards middle to end of summer, we should be having, you know, two, two mines hoisting graphite. Um, and we're gonna continue on with our work in the, with the UK and the battery space. Continuing cycling, continuing to optimize our our materials, so we should see some more news flow there. Um, so I think, yeah, I'm excited about what's coming, and again, I'm, I'm also excited about to see how um, graphite is, is sort of come into its own. Finally, it's always been lithium hydroxide and, and, and nickel and cobalt, and um, and graphite is 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 high on the list now of, of some of these OEMs that are all of them, but you know, the conversation we're having, there's definitely a concern about this supply. So um, I'm just gonna continue doing what I'm doing. Uh, my whole approach is, is from, a, you know, I'm an engineer first and foremost, and, and we're building things. So we're gonna get this thing working, working well, working efficiently, uh, mechanizing uh, all the things I've talked about before so we can get um, and have meaningful production to where you know, the OEMs are comfortable that we can supply them, you know, 40, 50,000 tons, you know, when they need it, at least or more. On that note, uh, Donald, I really appreciate your time today. Thanks so much for these insights. Thanks, Kyle. Always a pleasure. And I look forward to the next conversation. And on that note, folks, I pass the question off to you. Consider checking out our last of videos because Donald was actually at the mine site itself. Got some really incredible insights and videos from that. But consider subscribing because as more news comes down the wire, we'll always continue to update you here. But stay cool, stay awesome. And as always, I look forward to catching you in the next one. <laughs>